everyone. I would like to begin by introducing myself, Claire Finan. I'm the program coordinator here at Parktown Place and the programming director at InLiquid. On behalf of Parktown Place and InLiquid, we'd like to humbly acknowledge the Lenape peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their homes here today. Thank you all for joining us for an artist talk with Ahmed Salvador. This talk is brought to you by Inliquid and Parktown Place Museum District Residences, a premier air communities property. Situated in the heart of the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, Parktown Place has dedicated themselves to making the arts an amenity. In addition to being surrounded by neighboring arts institutions, Parktown Place has brought the arts inside their buildings through their rich permanent collection, regular art workshops, classes, events, artist talks, and three separate gallery spaces for rotational temporary exhibition. The current temporary exhibition is Huga, which highlights the work of eight artists whose work in the show explores themes of home, its contents, its structures, and how it reflects upon our own identities. Each of the included artists use these ideas as launching points to deeper conversations of identity, memory, and value systems. Their work is all undeniably full of Huga. Included in Huga, which is, you can see uh, some of the show on the other screen, is the work of Ahmed Salvador, who is here with us tonight. Ahmed holds his BFA in photography from the University of the Arts here in Philadelphia, and an MFA in photography from Cranbrook Academy of Art in Bloomingfield Hills, Michigan. In addition to his photographic work, he is the exhibitions coordinator at the Philadelphia International Airport and a photography instructor at the Flesher Art Memorial. He has shown his work both solo and collaborative in various solo and group shows. Tonight, Ahmed will be discussing his process, the use and manipulation of traditional dark room processes, as well as his inspirations and the theme of home in his work. During these topics, please feel free to enter any questions that you have through the chat function, and I can ask them on your behalf. At the end of the conversation, there will be a dedicated time for audience members to turn on their microphones and cameras and ask questions themselves. As a warning, Ahmed will be sharing some videos during his presentation that contain flashing images. This may cause discomfort or trigger seizures for people with photosensitive epilepsy. We'll be sure to warn you before these play. So without further ado, welcome Ahmed. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much. The umbrella title for a lot of the work that I have in the Huga exhibition uh, is uh, called Home and Other Stations. The work in the exhibit are all photograms and uh, photograms are, well, the textbook definition of them uh, is uh, it's a photographic image that's made without a camera by uh, placing objects directly on the surface of light sensitive material. Uh, and what that does is it normally produces a negative image, uh, which is something that I want to avoid. Um, I wanted to make sure that the image that I have on these, uh, as an end result is a positive. Um, and I'll explain more about that uh, later. Um, the tone of a photogram uh, varies depending on the transparency of the objects used. So the photograms are one of the earliest photographic processes. Back in the 1840s, uh, William Henry Fox Talbot and Anna Atkins were some of the original photographers that used it mostly as a means of representation. They would place uh, leaves and different objects on the photographic surface. Uh, then the process continued into the 1920s uh, more as a way of distorting images. So uh, Christian Schad, uh, Man Ray, and uh, Laz Lazlo Moholy Naj would use it as a way of dis distorting the form. Uh, and some of these uh, practitioners of that were uh, Dada artists. Uh, so I enjoyed the fact that a lot of these images, I'm kind of harking back to this Early, early ancient, oh, sorry, not ancient, but uh, earliest form of the photo process. Uh, now, when it comes to the title of this, uh, 
home and other stations. Uh, it's pointed in that it's home and other stations. So home is, is part of the whole route that uh, you are going to, uh, that it's not a place that is a destination, but more of a stop. So it's something very temporary about the home. And in a way, it's the opposite of Huga in that um, these homes feel uh, distant. They're constantly at eye level. So they're about 50 to 100 feet away and they are vacant and hollow because some of these homes, you can't see the interior uh, of them. And uh, there's little details of, of furniture um, and they also appear flattened, which is one of the byproducts of photograms is that they flattened uh, uh, whatever object they're placed on there. Um, they're, the originals that I use are actually modified uh, miniature houses that are you know, several inches thick, but here they're, again, I'll say this again, they're flattened and uh, the way the light hits the object, depending on the, the, my source is usually moving back and forth and it's hard to tell where the shadow's gonna lie. So that's, it's going, it's that kind of an experiment for me every time I use it. Um, I also want to kind of get a sense of menace with some of these images. And, and because the way that the home feels, it feels that it's something that is kind of alien and the houses appear sometimes to be uh, haunted, uh, but they're illuminated. So they are inviting in a way, um, and they are always in light. Um, so that is important to have this kind of uh, deception for it. Um, now, when I do the photograms, uh, I have multiple versions of them. So it's, there's, there isn't always just, okay, here's the final one. I have multiple, versions of the one they have, for example, in front of you right now. Um, and so this would be one of the stills from it. And I start to introduce some things in the windows and some of the objects I introduce to things that you normally wouldn't see when looking into a house, like trees. Usually that's something that you look out from the interior. So I wanted to kind of reverse the perspective uh, on this, uh, but when I animate several stills and trials of this, uh, I can get different effects. And uh, this is a combination of different stills and also I am augmenting them uh, in Photoshop. I do do this kind of bleed effect to enhance the sense of ominousness uh, that the, the images have. Um, why are there trees in the windows? Maybe that's a sense of uh, false comfort or abandonment. Uh, and when I do the videos, I am, or the animations, uh, I, nothing is really quite moving in, in, in the actual uh, images. I am scanning them. And so, and, and by doing that, I am being, or the, the viewer of these images are, they're becoming a voyeur and they're peeking into uh, the, the environment. Uh, it could be voyeuristic. It also could be something that they want to enter, but are unable to because they're, well, the image is really flat and it's nothing to enter into. So all you can do is kind of wander around um, it's something that I wanted to create this false sense of, uh, kind of humanity, but at the same time, it's kind of inhuman, uh, and something in the images have infiltrated the home, uh, or is the viewer infiltrating by getting closer to the image. 
So here's another uh, still. Uh, again, uh, when I, my source of light when I do the photograms varies. So you have different degrees of shadow um, illuminating inside the house, outside the house, project, projecting uh, uh, the, the shadow. Uh, here is a couple. Here are a couple stills that I would animate. Uh, different colors, different qualities of light. And uh, no, one thing I wanted to bring up uh, is that these are done with uh, the RA4 process, which is originally Kodak's name for the chemical process to make color prints. So I actually teach this at Fleischer Art Memorial and is a color uh, darkroom uh, class. So I, I teach it and I also <laughs> uh, practice it. Um, and in a way, this is one of the photo processes that is most in danger of disappearing is traditional color photography, which has been uh, kind of usurped by uh, digital. And, but to have a hands-on way of making these images is really uh, crucial and something that I uh, want to continue with in, in my classes. Um, and I do it all open trays, not to get too in the weeds with photography, but I don't use any um, color processors. These are just uh, open trays with developer and Blix and all that stuff. Um, but it's, it's crucial to kind of uh, do it and get your hands dirty, but with gloves on, of course. Um, So this is another still, I have another one. And then when I combine all three of the ones that you just saw, so one, two, three, these comprise uh, the, the animation. So multiple stills going together and a couple of little flashing things here and there. But I zoom in and I analyze. But nothing's really quite moving. So, but the, the falseness of the movement kind of adds to maybe it's a, a, a sort of an unease to it. I don't know. It depends on the, uh, the, uh, the, the viewer. Here's another uh, animation. Different uh, combinations of trees in front of this house. Uh, Yes. So, uh, if I if I were to go back again to yes. So for uh, yes. So the actual print, it looks like this. So the eight by ten and um, different color filters. Yes. Um, and but they're the same house. So the ratio is the same. And then when I combine them all, it's kind of like looking at a flipbook, uh, an animating flipbook of all these images and it creates that effect. Does that, that answer your question? Yeah. Um, is this a kind of animation for a cartoon or something? What's the purpose of this? That's a good question. Uh, mm -hmm. I, think, I think the purpose of this is to, let's see, make sure I'm on the, I would like to ultimately, and it's kind of, um, is to make a feature film <laughs> of all these animations. Uh, and the idea is to have an, a narration uh, supplied over the uh, film that doesn't quite go with the images, but maybe tells a story. And now there are other images linked to this process that I, I'm not showing tonight that have a lot more of live action uh, footage of actual trains going round. And sometimes the trains are on fire. Sometimes the trains are coupled with real uh, uh, locomotives or diesels. Um, and, but some kind of story is being told there, but I'm not sure what it is yet. But I think the narration will clear it up. Um, that answers the question a little bit, you know. I mean, if this is a film, this 
That's true. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So yeah, the people may look at this image and maybe get a headache after a while. Um, but I guess they can stop watching if they wanted to. I, I, uh, I. It's up. It's up to them. But I. Um, maybe I want to kind of push the envelope there. But I guess I have to give fair warning. Here's some more stills, and then here's uh, another animation. Um, and this one, I'm coming getting closer to the interior of this house. And I'm kind of playing a little bit more with, with the spacing of the images and the shuffling of the individual prints. Now, again, these are all comprised of individual uh, images, actual prints. So uh, I'm not, even though I'm separating some of the layers of these prints in Photoshop, I am not creating too much of a falseness in Photoshop. I, I'm just keeping <clears throat> the prints as a, a basis for them. Um, here is another video. Uh, this one includes some more trees in there. And uh, the trees are nice because I think uh, when, when you do photograms of miniature trees, they kind of lend themselves nicely to a lot of light bleeding in uh, different areas and creating a nice kind of um, shading there. But um, does anybody have any other questions? On, on Not so far. Okay. Do you have a question? Yes. So who is a video artist or a filmmaker in your life that really inspired you for this type of work? Or this flash image sort of over and over again? And can you repeat the question? Yes, the yes. What uh, filmmaker in my life uh, or filmmakers if there is one. have inspired me with uh, to do this style of animation? And I think uh, there's a couple things. Um, I could just kind of go backwards a little bit. Um, when it comes to animating all these disparate kind of Excuse me one second. When it comes to animating all these disparate uh, videos together and that don't really combine as a whole, uh, the, the, the fragments should combine if, if they're bracketed by a, um, uh, a narration. That reminds that I'm inspired by Chris Marker's uh, Sunless or Sun Soleil. Uh, and that uh, film was comprised of a series of short films that were ostensibly uh, mailed from a filmmaker to a narrator. And the narrator is narrating the uh, films to the viewer. And that was really a, a big inspiration. Um, and there's a lot of structural film from the 70s that uh, was based on false movement. Uh, Serene Velocity is one where it is an image of a, of a hallway and the camera is either jumping forward or backward in time as it's zooming to create a false sense of movement. And I really am intrigued by, by that. Um, yeah, okay. That's, those, are, those are two, you know, out of many, you know. Um, But uh, I can go backwards and kind of show you more stills. Can I ask another question? You can ask another question, yes. So I noticed that in your art, you know, you have these repetitive images of houses and all different kinds of ambient lighting and foliage and trees and porches and you know, a lot of references trains on things you said. What is it to you, because I'm an artist too, and I get compelled by a certain imagery, almost obsessive with it, that I, are themes that repeat in my own artwork. What is it about these specific images that are so compelling for you, that sort of drive, drives the work? 
so the question is, why do these series images, what, what about these images, the houses, the trains, the, um, the, the trees, uh, do I find so compelling that I want to repeat and reanalyze them? I guess. Yes, because in my understanding, you've been working with these types of images for quite a while in your, in your personal artwork. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe, well, in a way, um, it is the idea of home, and which is, <laughs> it is about Huga, about the show, but it's also not about Huga. And so it's, a, it's about analyzing the home and everything around it and analyzing the that maybe sometimes it could be false, the comfort of it. Sometimes it could be something that, I also want to create, recreate the environment falsely and as if it was a memory of something. And I think that is why I return to it. I also like working with miniatures. I like working with photograms. And I like the idea that I don't uh, have to work with uh, a camera and a lens. and People tend to think that with photography, uh, you have to have a nice camera or work with the camera. And I feel that photography for me, and I, and photography is very important to me. However, I don't want to work with the camera that, uh, that often. Uh, and I kind of want to create images that are kind of, I want to set up roadblocks for myself to create the environment without having to actually go to the environment. And maybe that set of restrictions uh, uh, helps me in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions, I guess? No, nothing online? Yeah. Do you, do you want to keep going and take up for the end or? No, I think I'm, I, I'm just. Sure. Uh, um, so you, one of the questions is, you know, you referenced that we keep getting closer to the inside. Do yeah. we ever actually get inside? Um, no, we don't. Um, well, maybe that's because that's one of the reasons why I. I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm trying to articulate your your question. Um, I think it's one thing, one reason why I'm, 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 I introduced trees in there because, in a way, if you get close enough, let's see if I go to the, um, let's go, I think the slide. I can't, okay. So I'm trying to uh, get to go forward here. When I, when I introduce the trees in there and I get really close, to the window, I, I, there's a reversal that happens. And sometimes I feel that we actually are in the room right now, looking out. So it, I'm not sure if I'm very successful doing that here, but I, I, I like to feel sometimes the flip happens where we're actually looking out of the house. Now, are you saying that maybe what if we go into the house and we scan it around and look at the, the interior and the furniture? Yeah. Um, that's something that maybe I can, I, I like to analyze. Um, but I like the idea of the, these are possibly empty and um, that there isn't anything to scan inside and that they really are flat. <clears throat> so. And then uh, another question is, you are a trained photographer. Um, and now you have an interest in film. Uh, and a person is wondering if film's kind of status as a dying medium plays into the narrative or the hypothetical film at all. Um, and is that one of the things that attracts you to these fields? Yes, it does. And I, I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to color photography is that traditional color photography, which I used to do easily when I was in undergrad uh, is now something that is increasingly more difficult to to obtain the chemistry. Uh, even though I teach it, uh, sometimes I feel that my days are numbered in terms of uh, me actually getting the material that I, need, that I would use uh, 
but I will have to I mean, recreate the chemistry myself eventually. Uh, so it's important for me, not, not because it's a dying medium, uh, but it's important for me to do it in this fashion uh, because it's something that's, that um, I feel I, I can probably scan these houses, but I don't feel I will get the same quality. And also I wouldn't get the same kind of randomness that I'm, I'm used to. And um, I like the fact that I have, you know, so I, work, I work quickly when I'm doing these. And so I, I, don't, ha I don't like to labor too much on what I'm going to get, but um, certain kind of random processes are important to me. And this enables that. And so someone um, who joined a little late just wanted you to uh, review where, what buildings these are um, and if they are at all inspired by real places. Well, I think they're uh, real buildings. So uh, they are all miniatures. So the originals are little, little, little houses. And um, a lot of them are uh, made for uh, model railroading. So, um, and they're, again, they're modified to get the result that I want, uh, but. But are they miniatures of an actual place or mm -hmm. they're like, Okay. They're, they're miniatures of generic ranch uh, houses, Cape Cod, Victorian houses, you know, uh, and just made so they can provide. Now, here's another kind of thing where I'm taking a lot of materials that are used in model railroading, but I'm doing it in a very perverse way where I am taking them and when when a lot of model railroaders create an environment, they're always creating an environment that is very much a memory of something that's wholesome for the most part, or a an exact duplicate of this space at this time. And there's never anything that is that model railroaders do that is out of the joint. But the materials that I uh, that they use, I I find fascinating and. And by using them and I subvert them, I kind of negate the whole sense of this wholesome kind of diorama that they, that they uh, are, are using them for. Some people may not find these menacing, but you know, maybe, it's, maybe it's not menacing, I don't know. But and I kind of play into that. <laughs> I kind of play into the, but I, um, I'm not sure if they necessarily are. You know, maybe a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, not really a question, but a, a comment that I think is interesting um, is the train element makes one think of early films uh, that contain trains. Uh, and when they screened these early films, people thought that the actors were about to get run over. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that there is some similarities between the kind of fluttering of, of your films. And yeah. Early black and white films. I, I yeah, and I th that's and interesting. Ominousness. Yeah, I mean, I think there's another tale. I'm not sure this is how true this is that when impressionist paintings were first came about, that people weren't sure how to read an impressionist painting because it was so kind of foreign. Uh, and then when the um, the film that you're that you're uh, mentioning uh, when it came right at the viewer. They thought that something real was coming at them. Um, yes, if I create that same sense of, you know, <laughs> danger, then yeah, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> Does that answer the question? Okay. Uh, it wasn't really. No, it wasn't a question. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was more of a comment. Okay. Well, Ahmed, do you want to go ahead and mute yourself? I just wanted to yeah. thank uh, In Liquid and mm -hmm. and the whole organization uh, for uh, having me be a part of this exhibition and also having me be here for this talk. Thank you so much, yeah. and uh, thank you everyone for uh, showing up. I see a couple familiar names, but um, thank you so much. So.
I want to thank Ahmed uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, we are at Part Town Places campus, uh, so this is a little bit of a hybrid talk, um, you know, and thank you to our virtual audience for, for sticking with us. Um, you know, thank you, Ahmed, for, for being here. We will have to stop here for tonight. Um, for all of you who have not seen the show Huga in person, we invite you to come to Parktown Places campus and do so. You can always uh, check out our website and liquid.org to find out how to do that and more information about the show. And I hope to see all of you in person again soon.